Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome back to Let's Play Bubsy 2 for Super Nintendo, also on Sega Genesis. We've completed both wings of the game, and there's only one thing left to do now. The minigame mode. So let's go ahead and get on in there. And apparently you can still select your wing. Not sure if it matters. But I'll do it. And we start off with the Frogapult minigame. Definitely getting the most familiar layout here. Everything almost in a grid pattern at this point. For this one, I'm definitely going to start with the lower row first and then just work my way up a little bit, as you can see. That way, I'm always lined up with something. And this is working really well. Let's see if this will do it. That will give us just enough room. All I have to do left is go up a little bit. And I couldn't get to the boat in time. Oh well. I probably wouldn't have caught up with the boat and hit it anyway. But now it's time for the Armadillo minigame. Let's see what I can do here. As I keep jabbing left and right and up on the control pad so many times. And I don't want to go down there because I said I don't want to go down there because that's where the... Tire is. Don't really need the one up though. It would have been cool to pick that up. And we are now right there between the tires. So we've got quite a few points for time left on the clock there. Almost a good 5,000 points. Now it's time for the water mini game, which I barely showed off throughout the game. Definitely want to get the fish out of the way there. And I want to grab as many things as I possibly can as I do this. Now that we got that taken care of, everything at the bottom there, let's go ahead and go for the, straight for the middle. I want to get the whirlwind there to go my way a little bit. And then we can get over here. Barely got everything. And for that, we are getting a load of bonus points. So, I'm doing pretty well here as far as the mini games are concerned. Huh. I'm going through all three floors worth of mini games. You know what? That's fine. That's absolutely fine. Because I can get everything here. And it's a good thing I kind of doubled back there. And I thought I could actually reach something from there. Apparently not. I can reach this boat, though. So, if it hasn't really been said already, these mini games can be a ton of fun. I'm glad there's like a whole section of the game, or rather a whole mode of the game dedicated to them, and I'm surprised I did not hit that at all, dead center. I'm surprised I didn't hit that dead center too, well kind of half surprised that I didn't. And I'm not going to be able to launch a frog into that star up there in time, but whatever. 
I usually do a two-life game on the Frogapult anyway. And now it's time for this. Looks like I'm going to have to make my way up again. To get to where I need to go. I may fail this one. Somehow. That wouldn't really surprise me. Then again, I seem to be getting through this a lot faster than I'm expecting to get through it. Now, this should take me back to where the one-up is, and there we go. Had to concentrate a little bit there to get to where I needed to go. I could do a video for both wings, but you know what? You've probably seen all the layouts for all the things already, and it wouldn't really make much of sense to do so. You've probably already seen all the possible names for all these levels, and third George just having this around would not make any sense. And if this thing would get off of me, that would be great. Yeah, if you thought the j jellyfish sandwich was completely unendearing in the main game, they're even worse here. Because they can really slow you down in these diving suit levels. And I'm surprised I grabbed those two bubbles. That's a lot of bubbles though, 25. The whole thing reminds me of the whole underwater level and Barney's hide and seek and I just want to go bubbles, bubbles, bubbles and make stupid laughing noises the whole time. Just seeing all that. But we're back on the Frogapult for the third time. And if I don't hit that, I'm going to hit that. Yeah, I knew I wasn't going to hit the boat there. And I knew I wasn't going to hit that either. I'm going to concentrate on more on the things that I know I can hit. Such as this boat. That was fun. Can I hit this star? Not dead center, apparently. I can hit that one, though. But not that one, apparently. Sheesh, I'm having trouble hitting things dead center here. But yet, it's another two-life game. And we go back to the truck. Oh boy. We are to totally going back to the truck. And I had the feeling I was probably going to hit a switch there. So let's see what we did. With any luck, we'll have opened a path to the one up there. We didn't, but there we did. So I had the right plan in mind, I just had to hit the proper switch. I am doing really good at these for some reason right now. Like no Joe, this is incredible. And now it's time for the third water mini game, which hopefully I won't completely mess up. If there's anything up there, I'm going to save it. And, wow, I'm really going to mess this up. Maybe not. I really thought I was going to fail that. Nevertheless, it's still good to get that thing out of the way. Because... 
I can now get up here, grab that last bubble, and then get out of here with 30 seconds left. So apparently the water minigames are the easiest, followed by the armadillo ones, assuming you know what you're doing, and then the Frogapult is the hardest one. And once you beat all of this, you get the game over screen, which isn't much of the game over screen, and you get your final score tabulated. And if you leave this area, you go straight to the tile screen again. You know what? I guess I might as well make this a 20-odd something minute video. Let's do one player mini grand tour because apparently we now know that it takes you to all three floors. And I'm going to do East Wing again. I'm pretty sure I'll get all the names here if I do this. And with that, all the layouts. Wow, I thought I had launched the thing already. Shows how much I know. But we can go aim dead center for other things again. Time the launch of everything here, right? And I know that otter's gonna come down. So I'm gonna go gun for him first. I don't know what I was thinking doing that. I should have known that was not gonna go dead center. That amazingly hit the otter. I don't know why I tried to go for the boat there. I'm able to hit that dead center. And I thought I could hit that boat. Sadly, I could not. Oh well. I'll still be able to do well on the other mini games here. Assuming I don't horrifically mess anything up. You know what? Switches before everything else here. I don't want to go over there. Come on, game. And if I could get over into that corner, that would be great. Oh, no. I'm going to have to make my way back. That ain't good. I messed this up considerably. Oh boy, did I mess this up considerably. Can I get back there? Yes, I can. If I can do this without really messing things up. Come on, game. Ugh. Of course the path to the left eye would be connected to the middle. That was one of the harder layouts, to be honest. Lost in Flounder, we did not get that name anywhere in the Let's Play, so I'm glad I actually decided to do both wings of this after all. So, judging by what I figured out here, if you pick a certain floor and then do the minigame, you do the minigames only for that floor. Whereas if you do Grand Tour, you'll do three whole floors worth of mini games. That's cool. That makes for a good 10 minutes of time wasting. Get a nice drink of unsweetened tea there. And then head back to the Fragapult. I always like the screen for Fragapult now hiring the best. Pretty obvious as to why. I'm going to get some more power on this. Reason being, I want to hit some stuff right away. Get the power up here as I make my way to the right there. And it looks like I'll be waiting for the boats. If I can get to one of the sides... Ugh, 
This is going to be hard. This is the hardest layout for Frogapult because of all the boats. The timing on them can be way off. And if you're not dead center on the boats, you're not going to be hitting them. And I fail to see what this is going to do. Might as well want to... Might as well want to... Launch one more... Frog for good measure there. And, ugh, like I said, that was the hardest layout to deal with. Losing my bearings... Ah, the hardest layout for Armadillo. I definitely couldn't get through this one very well. Not while I was... ...doing this during the Let's Play. Really had to concentrate there, I'm so sorry. And... I don't like this path at all. I'm going right. Watch me hate this path too. Because reasons. No, no, no. You you go to the right. Had to keep mashing Y and B together. Just to ensure that I did this correctly. And I managed to get out of there okay. That's good. Bubble Bubble A Whale of Trouble. Another name I didn't get from the minigames. Which is something. And you know what? I'm actually going to go play chicken with the whirlwind here. And up. Uh, uh, that jellyfish just ruined everything. Oh well. I was bound to fail one of those sometime. This spot intentionally left blank. Now, this name, we did. And as you can see here, because we're at the last Frogapult, the little Frogapult platform is going pretty fast. And I don't know what I was thinking, thinking I could hit that. Clearly couldn't. And I thought I could hit that dead center. Apparently not. I will hit this, though. And this. I do want to adjust the power just a little bit just so I, to ensure that I can get these. I'm not going to get everything, though. That much is certain. As much as I wanted to. And I was too far to the right for that one. Oh, well. Still a two-alive game, though. And then we're going to get one more truck level and then one more water mini level. Apparently, there are only three types of mini games in the game. And we've seen them all. I keep thinking that maybe there's more, but... Apparently, that isn't exactly the case. And by hitting this, I want to believe... ...that there are more... ...minigame types... ...in the game. And there probably isn't. And I hit that already. What was I even doing? And, oh boy, I may fail this one by time over. Yeah, I couldn't even figure out where the switch was. It may have been on screen and I completely missed it. Now for the final water level. 20,000 leaks under the sea. We didn't get that title in the Let's Play. Let's go ahead and complete that one. And let's get rid of the two jellyfish while we're at it because I know they're just going to be a complete pain. 
and I'm gonna jump on that one just to play chicken with the tornado and somehow win. Let's see what I can grab here. And if this thing could actually get off me, I can get that last bubble and complete all this. Jellyfish sandwiches are the one thing that can make or break this thing. The other one is basically human error. Didn't score as well on this one, probably because I didn't do as well on some of the minigame layouts, especially that fifth water minigame. But we still got somewhere, and we've completed the minigame mode for both wings Grand Tour. You always get Fragapult, Armadillo, Water in that order. And you are, and, and with the Grand Tour, we did the first floor first, then the second floor first, and then the third floor first. I did them all first. You did the first floor, then the second floor, then the third floor. And whatever, if you do an individual floor, you will do that individual floor's titles for the mini games and get a much shorter game in the process. And it'll usually last for a couple of minutes at most if you do one single floor. I did both Grand Tours that took me about 20 minutes. That was fine. But now we are at our wit's end. We've done everything that there is to do. I could show off through player mode, but I don't have a second player or a second controller. So I'm just going to show off the credits. If you've ever played the first game, you'll notice that a completely different team has done this game. Team Bubsy. You'll also notice that as you go through this, Micro Berlin isn't even credited as the creator of Bubsy. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's even in the credits at all for this one. I don't think he's even involved. And of course, Rob Paulson, voice of Yakko, also does the voice of Bubsy, which explains why he sounds like a high-pitched Yakko. And there we go. Once you reach produced by, you know that the credits have looped around. And I might as well just go ahead and mention my opinion of the game. It's not that bad. There are still cheap deaths and cheap hits abound compared to the first game. The gameplay is just as tight as it was in the first game. You do have the addition of the toys, such as the portable hole, the Murph Balzuka, the Smart Bomb, the Diving Suit. You have the mini games, which are now in a much higher, I guess you could say, probability of happening. They happen much more frequently. That's the word I wanted to use. It doesn't capture the Sonic the Hedgehog clone feeling and design of the original game. So, as a result, this one feels more like a Mario game with Sonic stuff built in, but at least it's not super fast, like, I wouldn't say super fast, but like, super slippery like Roadrunner's Death Valley Rally was. There I am mentioning a game I have not played for the channel and probably never will. But because of that, it just feels like a more by-the-numbers game, a more average game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I did enjoy what I had here. But if you want to go fast, you're better off just playing the original. If you want more platforming, you play Bubsy too. Which means that maybe there is a reason why Michael Berlin, the creator of Bubsy, basically said that the game almost killed the franchise and he didn't like it because it didn't fit his original vision. Because it pretty much didn't. It was, it was basically him making a Fonda Hedgehog style clone with nine lives and a lot of one hit deaths. Here you have, th you have three hits before you die, unless you hit certain things. 
or jump into a bottomless pit. But other than that, it's not a terrible game. I can still recommend it. But it's not exactly going to set the world on fire. Music is pretty good. Sound is pretty good. Playability is okay. There is a lot of replay value because you can play any level you want. You don't have a password sy system, but then again, the password system is kind of unnecessary for this game because again, you can choose any floor you want, any wing you want, and therefore any level you want. You can go through all three floors of a certain wing if you so choose in one sitting. And of course, there's still the two-player mode with some added features such as the ability for the second player or the other player to play as a nephew and find enemies alongside you and even mess your game up, mess your progress up if they so choose on Feisty. It, all in all, it's not a bad game. It's really not a bad game at all. Not as much trial and error with this one. And it's not that bad a game. And I've pretty much gone at length about this game. And I might as well just go ahead and end this Let's Play here. So hopefully I will be back with another Let's Play. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Maybe it'll be whatever. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for watching. And see you guys later.